let's dive in with the multi-stage query engine. Now, Pinot's architecture supports low latency queries on batch and streaming data at high concurrency. It is an engine built to do that well. And it's optimized for queries that filter and aggregate. That's key. So it's not optimized, say, for joins. Most of the query processing in Pinot historically, occurs on the servers, that's a component in the cluster, and then results, you know, those queries are scattered to the servers, are, are gathered back by the broker, aggregated there, and, and pushed back to the client. And that works very well for those filter and aggregate queries, doesn't work so well for things like general purpose fact-to-fact -fact joins or joins between large tables. So here's our broker, there are these two components that I'm pointing out there, the query compiler and the result reducer. So here's our query, it's a good old filter and aggregate, nobody gets hurt. That comes into the broker, it gets compiled, the broker looks at segment metadata and says, okay, these three servers are the ones that need to process parts of this query. So they get scattered to those servers, the servers do their work, send the results back to that broker, which then combines them together each one of those numbers, that's literally a scalar coming back from each server, gets sent to the broker, and those get averaged together into that one number, that one single scalar result. It's great when not much data is moving around, and the traditional architecture serves this well. But if you had large amounts of data coming back, like you might with a join, that result reducer is going to fall over. Just the broker is going to fall over doing all that I.O. It's not going to work. So here's what we do now. The multi-stage engine works like this. A query comes in to the broker, again, to a query optimizer, looks at the query, figures out how many stages are we going to need for this, and on what servers should they run. So right away, if you look at that query, we're interjoining order status and customers. So let's assume those are both really large tables. Now, some of the servers in the cluster are going to be handling order status. There are going to be some other group of servers in the cluster that are going to have the segments of the customer table. Those could be different sets of servers. And so those will do the work of being servers, send the results back, not to the broker, but to this new data exchange component. Now, this isn't a separate physical component. It's a part of the servers. But logically, they use this data exchange component to shuffle the data that comes out of those two base filter queries to get them back to a set of intermediary servers with the right sets of user IDs from both tables shuffled so that they show up in the same server, right? Because at some point, that join operation is going to be performed by an in-memory lookup, so those all need to be in the same place. So that join gets done there by those servers, and that doesn't go back to the broker yet. It goes to the data exchange layer again, and back to another intermediary server where those results are combined. There is always in the final stage a single server that takes all the results and streams them back to the broker, and now the broker has joined results. And now with this mechanism, we're able to do performant joins between large tables. There are going to be other kinds of queries that are going to be unlocked with this mechanism, uh, subqueries, other kinds of things that wouldn't have worked well in the old architecture. Uh, the Pinot team has really taken the time to build this the right way as a general purpose engine to be able to do this kind of thing performantly going forward.